everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today I'm sharing a really cute little holiday card project and I was inspired by a card I saw from designer Yana Smokula. I'm gonna link her blog post below so you can check out the card that inspired what I'm sharing today. And I'm excited to share it with you because it, it's pretty cute. Stick around, that card project is coming up next. Here's a look at the card project I'm sharing today. And something that I did not know is that you can color and stamp or stamp and color an image and then emboss over the top and not lose the detail. That's what this card is all about. So let's take a look at the supplies I used. I love this stamp set from Gina K Designs. This is from last winter. And here's a look at this wonderful embossing folder called Sprinkle Snow Globe. Very cool idea. Didn't know what I was gonna do with it until I saw what Yana did and I thought, I can do this. I can stamp and color on paper and emboss. So that is what I'm gonna do. I'm not sure which snowman I'm going to use at this point, but they're both adorable. I have intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp, a little embossing powder and some Versamark, and a little gaggle of Copic markers. I'm keeping it very, very simple today. So hope this inspires you to color simply. The first thing I wanted to do was figure out where the snowman needed to be placed so that when I emboss the paper, it's going to line up perfectly. So what I decided to do was just put the paper behind, right? And kind of figure out where the snowman was, add a piece of tape to the back, and then just press that down in my Misty. And before I move the snowman off that folder, I'm picking him up so that now we have both the snowman placed where he needs to be and the paper where it needs to be. I'll ink this up with the intense black because it is a Copic friendly or alcohol marker friendly ink. I'm gonna stamp this down using my Debbie tool. Makes my wrists feel so much better. But I'll transfer the ink and then I'm going to stamp it one more time. The paper did not move at all. And we'll ink up again. I just figured I wanted a really inky impression because I knew I was going to be embossing after everything was colored. All right, getting it transferred. And there we are, my cute little snowman, ready for coloring. I'll just take that tape off and that looks great. I'm gonna speed up my coloring here because you know, I'm not really a Copic master. But one of the things I've done is replaced most of my chisel nibs with these little fine nibs. It's pretty easy to do. In fact, I'll link a video showing you how easy it is to change a nib. I'll put that in the upper right corner for you. I change them because it just makes it easier for me with these smaller nibs to stay in the lines. That's, that's why I do it. And I'm keeping this coloring really, really simple. Just a few reds. I'm gonna use a few blues. I don't get too wild with my coloring. But the thing is, is you really don't have to. When you have a simple, cute image like this, you don't have to be the fanciest color on the block. You might not even be the fanciest color in the city or the state. I'm, I don't know what I'm reaching for here, but my point is I keep it very simple. I'm not a master at shading and all those good things. So once I figure out a couple markers that work like R29 and R24, I use these again and again. Sometimes I go out of the lines, and when I do, I always keep my colorless blender, which also I replaced the nib so I would have that nice chisel. You can push the ink almost right out of the paper. It kind of lifts it up. It acts like an eraser for the most part. It's not 100% foolproof, but I always keep one on hand. So I'm adding my little shading. Again, keeping it simple with just the two colors. And I should have walked away right there, but I decided to go back over with the BG10 to blend, and it kind of just made it flat, kind of, kind of null and voided what I had just shaded. But you know, you live and you learn, and you keep on going. The point is, you can color a little snowman, keep it very simple, and no one's gonna look at it and say, you know, I wish you would have done a little more shading and depth, and honestly, a third marker really would have helped. No, I don't think that's gonna happen. Adding in my red stripes, cause this is the motif. I'm not, I'm not doing anything else, just the red and blue. 
and I got a little bit aggressive with my color and it sort of seeped into the blue and I could see it as I was coloring. I thought, oh, what do I do? So I just took my BG markers, kind of went back over, kind of like the colorless blender, hoping that that would erase the red. And you know what? It looked pretty good. I'm coloring the nose with the YR04 and we're just adding a little bit of shadowing with a T marker. Here's the other thing too, if you're going to emboss over something, if your coloring's not perfect, no one's going to know. The embossing is also going to add a level of detail, so don't stress it. But how cute is that? Now, here's the folder, right? I've got it lined up. It looks good in there. Now, here's my sandwich. I take the clear cutting plates out. I add a metal shim or adapter plate to the platform and then just put this on the platform to run it through. Sometimes you might need some cardstock to add an extra shim, but for this I didn't because I didn't want it to be so bubbled out that I did mess up my image, but check this out. Look at the layers of detail and the snowman is perfectly fine. I thought that turned out really, really, really good. Now I'm going to trim this down by hand because I didn't want to use one of my A2 layers dies because I didn't want to lose any of that wonderful embossing. So I just kind of kept cutting a little off the top, cutting a little off the bottom until I got this to the size that I wanted for my card. For the greeting, I'm going to pick it up off the paper, but then the beauty of the Misty, manually curve it so that it would fit the gentle curve of the snow globe. And that well, it looked pretty good to my eyes, so I'm going to powder up with embossing magic just to remove static and oil. I'll ink up that greeting with Versamark ink, get a nice coating on there, and stamp it down. I'm not going to press too hard. I just added nice, even pressure to transfer the ink and not smoosh those letters. And once that was on, time to sprinkle some silver embossing powder over the greeting. Oh, look great. I love that you can curve your sentiments on the Misty Door. So we'll melt that powder until it's all smooth and silver and shiny. And look at that. Oh, I love it. So cute. All right. For my card base, I've got a piece of Schoolhouse Red from Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to score this and fold it so it's a USA 2, which is four and a quarter wide by five and a half inches tall. I've got foam tape on the back of my panel, and we are going to pop that down with that lovely, I guess it's about a quarter of an inch margin, framing that out. Isn't that a great look? Now, this is fine as is, right? You get the detail, you get the texture, but you know, I laid out a bunch of confetti sequins, and I thought to myself, let's just go for it. Now, here's the thing. I don't think I've ever booped this much in any video. I can't even boop. I can't even say it because if I did, I'd start to run out of breath. But, you know, just a little boop. <laughs> we are going for it because I wanted to fill in spaces where I thought, well, a sequin would look good here. One would look good here. So boop, you know, just working it, working the boop. And once I had like this first collection down, I thought to myself, I don't think that looks random enough. You know, it was shiny, subtle, fun, but you know what it needed? It, it needed more boop. So I added in more sequins until I felt that I really did have one in every little place that it should have been, you know? Uh, get in there. Sometimes it's hard. Boop. And, you know, it's hard to know when to stop. But I like this look. I like silver confetti sequins because it just adds this neutral shine and that is the finished card project. Love how this turned out. I hope this inspires you to see what embossing folders you have on hand because you can stamp, color, and emboss over the top. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. 
Thanks so much and have a great day.